Hello, hello folks. Today's video is a little bit shorter, but it's one that I've been wanting to do for quite some time. I wanna show you how to quickly and easily create a custom 3D LUT within DaVinci Resolve. So if you wanna learn how to create a LUT that you can apply to your footage, then this is the place to be. Let's jump into it. So like I said, we're gonna be going over how you can create your own custom LUTs within DaVinci Resolve. And just a disclaimer, I am not a pro colorist. I am not a LUT master. I am none of those things. I'm just a filmmaker who knows how to make his own LUTs. And it's a process that I've really enjoyed doing. So I'd wanna share that with you. Um, what we're gonna be working on today is making a hybrid LUT. So it's not a technical LUT. It's not meant to just convert a log image to just Rec. 709 and that's it. It's also not just creative, meaning it's not meant to turn a Rec. 709 image into you know, a cool grade or a cool look. It's a hybrid, it's meant to do both. So what it's gonna do is take a fully log image and it's gonna transform it into um, a Rec. 709 image, but also one that has a little bit of a grade, a little bit of a look to it. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and start from scratch here. So here's DaVinci Resolve. Here's a clip that I've pulled up from a camping trip that I've been on. What I'm gonna try and do is create a look or a LUT that I can apply to the rest of this footage. Um, from this camping trip. So as you see here, there's a bunch of other clips. So this is kind of my hero shot. This is the one I'm gonna work with. Um, generally, it'll get the rest of the clips kind of where they need to be, but then I'll go through and I'll make small adjustments to those as uh, as we go on. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Alt S. I'm gonna create five uh, nodes here. I'm gonna go to Open Effects. Color Space Transform is the effect that we want to drop down on our last node. And essentially what this is gonna do is this is gonna let us select the right color space for this log image. So we need to select our input color space. So for my particular case, Sony S Gamut, the input gamma is gonna be S log two, Sony S log two. Okay, and the output color space we are shooting for is Rec. 709. We're gonna select that for our output gamma as well. And you can see it's looking better, but something's wrong here. So I figured going to tone mapping, uh, I changed it to simple and that kind of preserves the dynamic range I've noticed. So now you can see everything is kind of um, contrasted, but it's also still within our scopes here. So before, you know, when it was set to none, you can see our highlights just totally blow out. So we go to simple and we're gonna close our open effects. And now you can see here, we're generally in a good place. Essentially what this has done is it's done that transform for us. So we're gonna do a little bit more to it to get it to the LUT that we want it to be. So now we're gonna jump into our first node and we're gonna add a little bit of contrast to it. We're gonna push it just a little bit more and I'm gonna mess with the pivot just to give it a little bit more brightness. Um, I like to bring down the gain a little bit and kind of bump the gamma up. That kind of preserves some of those darker shadows. And then the lift, I just bring down a tiny bit. So that's looking pretty good to me. I'm gonna jump to our second node and I'm gonna adjust the saturation. And you can go through and you can name your nodes if you want. I'm just, I'm really going kind of quick through this so I don't waste too many people's time. And okay, so that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna jump to the third node and this is where I'm gonna kind of mess around with the primaries a little bit to kind of get it to where I want it to be. Just super small adjustments. I'm not trying to mess too much with this. Um, Cool, like right about there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump down to our hue versus hue curves and I'm gonna hit shift and click and that makes it so the line doesn't move. And I'm just gonna kind of move our yellowish green area just a little bit more towards the orange. This is totally all personal preference. A lot of you might cringe or tell me I'm doing it wrong. I don't really care, I like the way it looks. And ultimately that's what filmmaking is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this done and we're gonna generate a LUT. So I'm going to right click and I'm gonna go to grab still. And then what you do is you go to your gallery on the top left here and you notice that you now have a new still. So as you kind of scroll through, let's say you go to your other clips, like let's take a look at this one. This one is an ungraded clip and you hover over this, it'll apply that grade just as a preview. So you can kind of scrub through and see what it would look like. And I, I think this is looking awesome. I'm really excited to use this LUT as a starting point for this video. So let's generate a LUT from it. So you're gonna wanna go to the clip that you've done all the adjustments on, and you can't do this in the gallery. You gotta go down to your clip area. You're gonna right click, you're gonna go to generate 3D LUT, and we're gonna select 33 point cube. And there's a reason for that. Um, 
It generates a smaller file size than 65 point cube, but I've also had issues generating 65 point cube LUTs where they don't necessarily work on my monitors. I will potentially be using this um, LUT on my Atomist monitors, and I've just only had luck with generating 33 point, not 65. Um, I've, I've read online as well that some cameras won't accept a 65 point LUT cube, so I always do 33. Um, we're just gonna save it to my desktop, and I'm gonna call this Grouse Ridge LUT, and that's just because that's where the camping spot was. So we're gonna hit save, and boom. And once you hit save, it's done. It's exported a uh, .cube file to my desktop. I can now drop that onto an SSD and throw it on my external monitor and use it to monitor out on the field, or I can just uh, import it into Resolve or even Premiere if I wanted to, to uh, you know drop it on um, some of my clips to give it a look. So it's really that easy to generate your own looks and LUTs. I really prefer doing this in DaVinci Resolve over Premiere Pro. Not only is this just a much faster and more intuitive program, but it gives you more control and a little bit more finesse over things. Um, you can do the same thing in Premiere Pro. I just, I prefer to do it in DaVinci Resolve and that's just who I am. So you've just created your own custom 3D LUT in DaVinci Resolve. The possibilities are now officially endless. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe down below. Follow me on Instagram at Timmy Lodi. I'm always posting new stuff there. And until the next one, see you later. Peace.